Hi Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 27th, 2023 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, so thank you so very much for doing so. If you're interested in entering to win a free reading from me, put a turkey in the comment box. A person will be chosen at random at the end of the month, and I will be announcing the winner in a separate video. So nobody should be contacting you in the comment box saying, hooray, you know, congratulations. It will not be me, okay? So it will not be me. Do not be scammed. If you're interested in a private reading, a private personalized meditation, or a healing, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. It is linked in the description box below, as are the cards that I'm using for this reading. Okay, now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. All right, Virgo. We are going to be talking about the full moon in Gemini on the 27th of November. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Ooh, goodness. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So you have the three of pentacles, the king of swords, the four of wands reversed, the nine of pentacles reversed, angels and spirit guides the star reversed, and the moon reversed. All right, so I know what you're thinking. There's a lot of reverse cards here, and that seems to be the way this moon is going. This moon is very intense with its energy. This is an intense, volatile, fast-moving full moon, and a lot of the cards are coming out reversed because of this. So just being aware is going to be super important during this time. This moon tends to hit us. It can hit us hard and it can bring out more intensity than maybe we were looking for during this time. So we're at, this moon will be at four degrees, 51 minutes in Gemini. Now this is a mutable sign, okay? Meaning that it is very kind of, well, mercurial. It changes, it looks at all the different sides of all the different things. And it's very nonconformist. Being aware of that energy is going to be super, super, super important. All right. This also begins a five full moon cycle from Gemini to Libra with strong and powerful endings and new beginnings. So just knowing that things are going to bring, this is going to bring powerful endings, powerful new begin beginnings. And we're going to see that for the next four moons, of course, excluding this moon, making it five. Six planets are also in mutable signs. So that is Neptune, Saturn, the moon, the moon, Mercury, which rules us, Virgo. We are ruled by, we are ruled by Mercury, just like Gemini. So we can feel very at home with this moon as well. The sun and Mars are all in mutable signs, which can make this time feel very chaotic. And we can kind of see that with the cards that are reversed. We also have the star reverse, which is Aquarius energy. We might not be getting on very well with Aquarius energy, or if we have Aquarius energy in our chart, we can find that to be a bit of a struggle during this time. Also with Pisces, we might not be getting on very well with Pisces, or if we have Pisces in our chart, we can be finding that aspect of our personality to be a little bit challenging. The King of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, 
we're going to be more at home with that energy, but also the go, get it, do it, you know, power, passion, guiding us forward is going to be very important. Just be mindful during this moon, especially that we don't need to have a temper. Like this can be a moon that can really let our, our um, fiery side shine. So just be mindful to that because air feeds, you know, feeds fire. So being mindful of that is going to be very important. Let's see what spirit wants us to know. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is earth reverse. So we're not as grounded as we need to be. As an earth sign energy, right, Virgo? We are an earth sign energy. As an earth sign energy, we need to be grounded. We need to connect with the earth. And we're not doing that as much as we should be. So just being called out by spirit right here, right now, touch earth, touch ground, ground yourself, center yourself. That is going to be so important for you. And also getting in touch with your earthy side, like getting in touch with a very natural part of yourself that you might have been like pushing off or putting in the background because you need to do X, Y, Z is also going to be very important. Our chakra message, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. This is divine wisdom reversed. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown and spirit is giving us divine wisdom. Are we taking it in during this time? No, during this time we can feel a little bit chaotic, a little bit intense, a little bit all over the place and that's okay. Spirit is still going to be bringing this wisdom forward for us and it's still going to be a very integral part of who we are, how we're moving forward and what we're going after. But divine wisdom reversed is saying our angels, our spirit guides, they're talking to us a heck of a lot more then we realize and we need to slow down and we need to listen. You can be getting a lot of messages through your dreams as well. So being aware of that is going to be very important. And the energy that we need to be mindful of, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. This is the three of pentacles reverse, which is very interesting because the reading is crowned by the three of pentacles in the upright position. We might find that people want to take credit for our work. We're going to have the people that we work fantastically with, and that's going to be an integral part of who we are during this time, that sense of collaboration, working together, you know, things being fair and balanced and even. But with it reversed, there's going to be the sense of I'm doing all the work and they're wanting to take all the credit. Or, you know, just kind of like people are using and abusing what you have created and cultivated and how you have moved things forward. So just being aware of that during this time is going to be very important because we can we can nip it in the bud or we can at least call it out. So I don't know if I stated this before, but we're going to be doing a blending of the astrology and of the the tarot for this full moon. So let me know what you think about it. And yeah, so now we're just going to be diving in. You probably caught on to that already as I was already, you know, or we, Spirit and I, were already blending the astrology with the tarot. So with the three of pentacles, crowning this whole entire time, this is really great. Now, also understand that with this Gemini full moon, Gemini is a thinking sign. Like it's about the mind, the head, thinking, connecting, understanding things. But every, everything begins with a thought. Everything begins with a word. And this, this energy gets planted and is anchored in our hearts. So if we want to go deeper into this, you can check out the astrologer, Pam Gregory. I have her linked in the description box below. She's absolutely been phenomenal. But when she said this, you know, that our thoughts are all linked in our hearts. We have to be anchored in our hearts. That really got me to thinking. Gemini is represented by the lovers in the major arcana. And that makes all the sense in the world. Our thoughts are then anchored in our hearts or then become part of our hearts, whether we want them to or whether we don't. So during this time to have these cheerleaders, to have these people that we can work with, collaborate with. I mean, we have high five, you know, high 10 right here. There's a sense of, you know, just really letting ourselves shine, being cheerleaders for ourselves and wanting to surround ourselves with that energy, with those people who believe in us, with those people who cheer us on. That is going to be very, 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 very important. With this intense and volatile full moon, we need to be the quiet warriors of the heart. 
and let love guide us forward. That is going to be one of the most powerful things we can do for ourselves. And that's going to be one of the most powerful ways that we can surround ourselves with people is saying, are they guided by their heart? Like, are they embracing love and kindness and respect and, you know, just this tranquility of being? Or are they chaotic, you know, very much being ruled by the ego? Because it's going to be very easy during this time. Not only do we have all this mutable energy, but we have Mercury, the sun, and Mars in Sagittarius. This is important because Sagittarius is all about freedom, independence, and the truth. Now we have the King of Wands right here. Sagittarius is also a fire sign energy represented by the wands. All right. So Sagittarius energy also brings the I'm right, you're wrong energy. We have to be mindful about this in ourselves, with others, that sense of I'm right, I have it all figured out, you're wrong, you don't type of thing. This can also be very spontaneous energy, very restless energy. We have to get out of our egos during this time, embracing our prosperity, embracing our bounty, embracing our hard work, and really seeing this is what I want, this is how I have to move forward, and this is what I'm going after. We can be very frustrated with that. We can be thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I, d I don't know exactly how I want to move forward, but I know it's, it's not here right now because there is this much, rest this much restlessness in us with the four of wands there's something that we have been devoted to whether it's a relationship or whether it's work or whether it's you know even what we thought we wanted that we're going to see ourselves changing our ideas on looking at things differently but with the king of wands there is a power in our passion a power in our work ethic a power in what what drives us what we love you know how we want to move forward in our lives so just being aware of this just kind of also calling out our ego during this time and saying, you do not get to be center stage. I am moving forward in passion, in creation, and in, in my ideas. That's going to be really, really, really powerful. Because also know that Mercury is conjunct the galactic center. And this is important because Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini, but also Mercury is the ruling planet of us, Virgo. And Mercury is just a powerhouse during this time. The mind has no limits. There are no limits on our thoughts. There are no limits on what we, we set our mind to and what we can do. So with the King of Wands, it's putting that into action and it's going after it. But with Mercury being conjunct the galactic center, this is also bringing divine intelligence and universal energy forward to us, guiding us, leading us, connecting us with so much more energy, so much more insight. That's the divine wisdom coming in that's reversed, there's there's a block to it because we do have so much going on right here. And we're kind of looking at a wish not granted. And we're very focused on that energy of a wish not granted right now. So just kind of knowing that is going to be a very important thing. Saturn is zero degrees, 56 minutes in Pisces. Pisces ru rules is, no, Pisces is represented by the moon in the in the major arcana. So being aware of that is going to be important because with Pisces being square with with Saturn 56 degrees 56 minutes of Pisces. All right, squaring the full moon, the sun and Mars. This is going to bring a conflict between tradition and innovation. And so we're going to find ourselves pulled in different directions like, you know, okay, this is the way it's always been, but this is kind of like either the way I dream of it of being or opening up these doors, seeing how to move these things forward. That's going to be an important thing. And that can also be part of the four of wands where we see what we're devoted to or, you know, what we had once celebrated. Now what not being right for us anymore. Now not what we want. So, or, you know, we're questioning it. We're saying, did I make the right choice or did I move forward the right way? Which is a total natural part of, of being human. But there, there's just a sense here of feeling restless and a little bit sad. So just an acknowledgement of that is going to be a very important thing. Now, Neptune is squaring, yeah, is squaring Mercury. This is also important for us because again, remember, we are ruled by Mercury and this brings a powerful creativity to us and powerful imagination. So knowing that for ourselves, but also knowing here that we have that power of creativity, we have that power of innovation, but we also have this sadness to us. The nine of pentacles is standing in our harvest and saying, yeah, there's a lot more hard work to come, but look at the prosperity that I have created. And this being reversed is 
really thinking, have I created anything at all? Have I cultivated anything that I really want? This is being very aware of the past, being very aware of the future, but having a very hard time standing in the presence right here, right now, and connecting with that energy. The star, Aquarius energy, okay? Again, we can be having a difficult time with an Aquarius, a time frame of January 20th to February 18th, but this can also be the wish of the soul, like what I deeply want inside of me, like what I deeply want, you know, to be moving forward in, in my life, like the soul's wish that we have, this reason that we're on this earth, we're out of alignment with. And spirit is saying, why are we out of alignment? And we could be even saying to ourselves, why am I out of alignment? Where is the chaos? Why is there hurt here? Why is there pain? I'm doing everything right. We're the king of wands when it comes to moving things forward and getting after things but there just seems to be this discord. And now this discord can be coming from the sun in a quinticelle with Uranus. And this brings a really intense aspect. So a quinticelle aspect brings obsession and war, which we can see in this world just so easily. It's like, look, just turn on the news, then quickly turn it off. But Uranus brings an awakening. Uranus brings a heightened state, a heightened state of being. And so here, we can have this energy of war and obsession and in ourselves that can that can translate to a, a disharmony within our being. And just seeing that, kind of calling that out and being able to see the disharmony and being able to say, okay, what do I need? How do I need to move forward? How can I show up for me? And am I holding sacred space for myself? That's going to be a big thing right here, right now, you know. Virgo. So just being aware of that is going to be super, super, super important. There is also a quinticelle between Venus and Libra and Jupiter and Taurus. Now both Libra and Jupiter, and not Jupiter, Libra and Taurus are ruled by Venus. This brings changes to relationships and finances, being aware of that, being aware of kind of what Pluto said, right? All is flux and nothing stays the same. This was said, I think it was 50 years before the birth of Christ, right before the common era began. And it's tr it was true then, and it's really true now. So knowing that everything is changing and we ourselves are changing and to show ourselves grace with our evolution of being. Now, we have the moon reversed, meaning that we are in a full moon and this moon can be difficult for us. It can be intense for us. It's calling to us more than maybe we're used to. You're celestially sensitive, or at least you are moon sensitive especially during this moon. So just be aware of it. And I would say for the next four moons to come, so five moons in total, you're going to be a bit more sensitive to them than you have realized. So mark them on your calendar, look at what's happening, like kind of keep a log of what's happening to you around, around the full moons, because it's going to be more intense emotionally than it usually is. This is looking at fear, and this is looking at kind of the fight or flight emotion, fight, fight, or fleet or freeze. And this is seeing how we are affected by things because we're going to be really reacting to things in fight, flight, or freeze. And seeing that within ourselves is going to be important for liberating ourselves from being, you know, kind of ruled by this energy or over, overpowered by this energy. So an acknowledgement of this is also coming forward. There is also a sense here of fearing the unknown, of looking at things and just seeing the shadows, just seeing the scariness. And spirit is saying, that's okay. Like we can be, we can be overwhelmed by the unknown, but to be, to be ruled by it, to be halted in our tracks by it, that's going to be something we kind of need to acknowledge for ourselves. We might need to get help. It could be by seeing a doctor or a therapist or, you know, talking to somebody about the fears that are around us or learning how to hold sacred space for ourselves, even chanting or, you know, humming, which sounds silly while you're meditating to, well, no, it's very common while you're meditating, but it's activating your thyroid in, in your throat, in your throat chakra. And that is going to be very powerful for you during this time. So acknowledging this power, acknowledging that there's a lot of fear that's brought up. There's a lot that has been brought up by this moon, but we don't have to be halted by it. We can be really enlightened by everything that's coming forward. Now, Mars is also squaring Saturn during this time. Mars is very go, go, go energy, which we're totally in line, with, in line with right here with the King of Wands. Saturn is more stop and think, but it's an earth sign energy. And we're a little bit out of alignment with that, even though we ourselves are an earth sign energy. So just knowing that instead of 
stopping taking everything in. We're just going to want to go, 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 go. And Spirit's saying here, slow down and hold sacred space for yourself. Now, I'm just going to take a sip of water. For, so give me one moment. Okay, perfect. So let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. So we have self-love crowning ourselves. We have trust reversed. We have boundaries reversed. We have self-reflection in the upright position. We have the path in the upright position. And we have acceptance in the upright position. So that's beautiful. It's so funny. This moon has a tendency to like ground us in its like in its being, like as as we see it in the sky, but it plays havoc on our emotions. So it's interesting. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. So what's interesting here is that we have the full moon in Virgo, and this is a full moon, and we ourselves are Virgo. So you are good enough. Write that on everything. Make that your screensaver. Make that the first thing you see in the morning. <laughs> I mean, write it on the inside of your eyeballs type of thing. You are good enough. You need to see that. You need to hear that. You need to connect with that energy because that is going to be one of the most important things you can do for yourself during this time. It moves us to self-love. We're crowned with self-love, and then in the reverse, step out of your comfort zone. We don't want to step out of our comfort zone. We kind of have figured out how we like things or how we would like things to be, and we're really good with, with staying there. Oh, goodness. Staying there with that energy. But Spirit is saying, hey, step out of your comfort zone. Embrace self-love. That's also what holding sacred space for ourselves is. It is giving ourselves permission to be loved, to be cared for, to be connected with, and it's, it's opening up the door but step out of your comfort zone during this time. That's going to be very, 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 very powerful for you. And that's also going to be with your collaboration with others, that self-love, that showing up for yourself, that sense of being, it's kind of like being a valuable team member. It's that that good energy, good vibes that you're, you're bringing to situations. And then stepping out of your comfort zone, it's kind of like just opening the door a little bit more for yourself, especially if you're a very introverted person. That's going to be a very powerful thing. Your commitment is being tested. Trust. Okay. Your commitment to what you want is being tested. So you might find that this is a more difficult time, that this has more trials, more tribulations than you had thought of and or that you thought were possible. And you're just in kind of that season of existence where, okay, things are harder than I thought they were going to be. And that's okay. Everybody goes through it. Everybody sees it. So here, again, show yourself grace, show yourself kindness, show yourself love and trust. There's, there's a sense here that the trust has been broken in one way or another. You think I can't do this or I, I don't trust that the universe has my back at all. You've let me down so much. How, why and how would I even trust you? But spirit is saying, connecting, slowing down and connecting with what's sacredly important to you will help to build that trust. Believe me, I know. I know when it feels like, you know, you're trying to do everything right and nothing is going right at all and everything's falling down around you. Mm, it's getting me emotional. Everything's falling down around you and you, you can't put out the fires fast enough. Your commitment to what you want. This is like, you know, you're going through your crucible. You're going through your fire. You're, you're, you're being forged, reborn, however you want to see it. You know, Phoenix rising from the ashes type of thing and trusting that there is an ending to this. That Things will come out okay. It's going to be really important. And we've kind of lost faith in that. We've lost faith in our dreams. We've lost faith in, in the power of ourselves to put that crown upon our heads and know that we are worthy of wearing it. Know that we are worthy of our might and our connection and our divine presence. You are good enough. Say that to yourself every single day and mean it. And it takes a while to mean it because I know if you've been here for a while, you can totally fast forward through this. But when I first read this card, I got so annoyed. You are good enough. I thought you're never good enough. You always have to keep striving. You always have to keep proving yourself. You always have to keep pushing. 
And that's a very unhealthy place to be. And so with learning that you are good enough doesn't mean you give up on your dreams or you sit in other, like, you know, just apathy of existence. It means that you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I'm pretty darn proud of who you are. I see you. I'm connecting with you. There's nothing more I have to prove. Now, boundaries are reversed. You, you don't have clear boundaries right now. you would be letting certain people in and certain people you can be pushing away. And it can just be like not letting in the right people and pushing away the wrong people type of thing. So being aware of that is going to be very, very, very important for us during this time to have clear and proper boundaries, making sure that our hearts are anchored in love and guided forward with that emotion. With the four of wands, our devotion is being tested. We are being tested, but we have to know that we are good enough. Meditate and contemplate is reversed. We need to slow it down. Meditate and contemplate. We don't really want to slow it down. We want to keep on going. We want to keep on pushing. This is fire. This is tenacity. This is brilliance. I want to move forward in all of that. And meditate and contemplate means slow down. And I don't want to. But spirit is going to make you slow down in one way or another. So just be aware of this during this time that spirit can make you slow down and really, really, really connect with your emotions in a way that you might have not been prepared for. So it doesn't mean anything bad is going to happen to you at all, but it can be that like, you know, you, you hurt yourself and you have to sit down for a little bit or, you know, something happens or you're going to go and you drive over a nail or you, you do something like that. And it's like, oh man, I have to slow down now. Spirit will make you slow down. You can even get a cold and I'm not wishing that on anybody, but like, you know, just know that spirit is going to make you slow down and meditate and contemplate if we don't start doing this for ourselves. Self-reflection. We're very good at looking at the way that we have grown, the way that we have moved forward. Again, we're very good at looking at the past. We're very good at looking at the future. But really seeing ourselves now, that's going to be important. And that's going to be part of the grace of meditating and contemplating. Expect powerful change. Seriously, from this moon, even though we can feel out of alignment with it, we can, like our stars also might not be aligned during this time. So certain things that we want might not be working out the way that we had anticipated. So just knowing that, like saying, okay, it's not going to be like this, or I'm not getting it like this, but what if I rethink my plans? Like, what if I, what if I do things differently? All right. That's going to be important because powerful changes are going to come in and it's like, okay, well, I have to recalibrate this. I have to relook at this. I have to re-understand this. All right, let, let's see it. Like, let me, let me understand how the path is opening up to us. But who expects the path to be this rickety, crickety ladder leading into a portal in the sky? So just knowing that as we're moving forward, the direction that we're moving, the way that we are moving, the, the, the way that we are going after our dreams and ourselves and what we love and what we want are very different than what we had expected. The path is going to be powerful for us but it's going to be very different than we had originally thought. And that's okay. But Spirit is saying that part of the path is to connect again with what your soul deeply desires. And divinity has not turned its back on you. The universe has not turned its back on you. Embrace your heart, embrace what you love. It brings us then to the end two of tough cycle approaches and that's reverse. We kind of think we're in this tough type cycle and we're going to be here forever. It's, it's kind of like when you're in pain, right? It's going to be there forever and ever and ever. That's what we think, but it's not. It's not. There's going to be a release. There is a release. So here with the end of a tough cycle approaches being reversed and acceptance being in the upright position, what spirit is saying is that the end of a tough cycle approaches as we accept what we love, what we want, and who we are. As there is a level of acceptance within us, even with what we're afraid of, just saying, you know, this can terrify me. We can do EMDR. That's, oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful practice to be able to do. And I mean, I, I've been doing that since I was, I was 15. Well, after, after tremendous loss and, and hurt and pain, you know, through that. So here, you know, just, just knowing that there is, there's beauty in connecting and th that there are modalities out there for you to be able to connect with. I also love Qigong. So I have Spring Forest Qigong linked in the description box below. But there is this sense here of this tough cycle is never going to end. And Spirit's letting you know it is going to end. There is a power to you. And just an acceptance of your path forward, of what you love, of what you want, of who you are, 
This isn't an acceptance of another person. The twins are coming forward, right? And they're, they can be, you know, you could say, well, they're different colors, right? Well, one's the sun and one's the moon, right? There's a power here of accepting the dual sides of you, accepting the intensity of you. And that power and that beauty moves you forward in an exquisite way, in an absolutely powerful way. And all of a sudden, we will start to see that as we start to accept ourselves, as we start to see ourselves, which again, we might need help, we might need, you know, ADHD medicine or, or something like that, you know, either holistically or, or through the doctor to be able to, to calm our mind and see things. Like we might need to talk to a therapist, we might need to, you know, kind of have help to get out of a space where we can feel overwhelmed or helpless at times. So acknowledging that within us and saying, that's not a bad thing, knowing that the world is intense, life is intense, show yourself some grace, that's going to be so, so, so important. Our subconscious spirit message is spontaneous reversed. Subconsciously, our spirit doesn't want to be spontaneous, even though we have, excuse me, even though we have our energy, we have, you know, the Mercury, we have Mercury, the sun and, and Mars in Sagittarius and wanting us to be spontaneous subconsciously here spirits like you know slow and steady wins the race like kind of do we like we like what we like <laughs> and that's what spirit is saying but there's also going to be the sense of i want to try everything i want to push the limits i want to see more so acknowledging that for ourselves is going to be important our subconscious chakra message is self mastery this is the solar plexus chakra this is knowing that our gut will guide us. We'll have a gut feel. We'll have gut instincts. Listen to it. It's it's self mastery. It's putting ourselves in alignment and it's listening to our bodies. It brings us then to our subconscious energy to be mindful of the six of pentacles. Be mindful that things aren't in balance and we're going to feel it. We're going to feel it. We are we're going to see it in certain ways. And the spirit is saying here when things aren't in balance, kind of call it out within your soul, within yourself. There needs to be an equal give and take. And if there isn't an equal give and take, we need to see why. We need to ask why. We need to look at what we want more and what is being given to us and saying to ourselves, is this is this right for me or is this not? There's going to be revelations made. I mean, seriously. Our subconscious tarot message is the world. And that's reversed. The world reverse is saying you don't not you do not need to be you know, jet setting around the world. You do not need to be, you know, going here, going in there, doing this, doing that. You're actually kind of upsetting your nervous system. There's a sense of your your spirit, your nervous system being on overload. And subconsciously, there's there's a shakiness. Like there's those nerves that are just kind of like tense and on edge and, and shaky. So acknowledging that is going to be a really important thing. This is about focusing on the universe within you, focusing on the soul within you and calming it down and seeing that at the end of the day, you matter. You know, your body matters. Your body's responses to things matter. Your connection with the universe matters. And taking that into account is going to be just, it's going to be life-changing is what it's going to be. It moves us then to our subconscious Luna message, which begins with surrender to the divine and darkness. From this full moon to the new moon in December. Surrender to the divine. Embrace the darkness. Embrace the unknown. Embrace the vastness of the universe that expands before you in infinitum. And that, at times, when spirit would show me that, and this wasn't too long ago at all, that I was completely overwhelmed. And when spirit would say, connect to the vast universe that expands before you, that would almost send me into a panic attack. I mean, seriously, no joke. Even when I would just have that message come from spirit to give to you when I'm just doing a reading, I was like, oh my gosh, it's too much. It's too fast. It's too scary. It's too overwhelming. But now there's a sense of, there's a clarity to it. There's a, a sense that you are so much more than you could ever have imagined. And embracing that and loving that and connecting with that is the most powerful thing you'll do. Because there's an interconnectedness in this universe. You know, all of us are made out of stardust. And that's just not poetry. It's, it's real. 
we have stardust running through our veins. And that is unbelievable. Surrender to the divine. There's a wisdom that is out there that is more than you. And it doesn't have to be orthodoxy. It can be surrender to the divine. Is see the trees growing. Know that they have been there for thousands of years and that there is beauty and power to that. Whatever works for you, wherever you are in your journey right now, connect. Connect with something faster than you because it will be beautiful. And do that from this full moon to the new moon and see, see where it gets you. See where it takes you. All right. Oh, yeah. No, we're done. <laughs> you guys are like, don't make this any longer. Okay. All right, Virgo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this full moon and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Virgo. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless and have a blessed moon. Bye.